Let's finish off the last couple of examples of this beginning lesson on gravimetric stoichiometry. What I'd like you guys to do now is try this one out. You know that you need the balanced chemical equation for the reaction between sodium chloride and lead to nitrate solution. It needs to be balanced and the starting and um, finishing information needs to be organized correctly in columns underneath that particular uh, balanced equation. So, what I'd like you guys to do right now is just pause the video for a moment, all right, and come up with that balanced equation and organize your solution. What you can do beyond that is try and take it through to a final answer as it's been given here. So, pause right now, try and complete this one, right or wrong, write down everything, and let's see what you come up with. Chances are, with what we've seen so far, you guys are getting to the right answer. All right, so give this one a shot on your own and uh, then unpause the video and I'll take you guys through a solution. So pause now. We'll see you in about five minutes. All right, guys, welcome back. Let's take a look at this one here. Here's the unbalanced chemical equation. You should have come up with NaNO3 aqueous as one of the products and PBCl2 solid as the other product. We still have some things to balance out. There's two NL3s, so I'm going to need two over here. That gives me two NAs, two here, two CLs. Fantastic, I have two CLs. PB and PB over here, so we are now good. I now need to organize my information, and it says what mass of sodium chloride solution, so I'm looking for a mass, is required to completely react with 11 grams of my lead nitrate solution. So now I have my starting point. I've been given 11 grams. There's a couple of different ways you can spin this. One of the key things that we would do is always try and put moles in the numerator. I know for stoichiometry that I want moles there all the time. One of the ways we can do that is we can use some of our conversions. I know I have to use molar mass to convert grams to moles. So why wouldn't I start with the molar mass of lead nitrate. Still just fine to start with 11 grams, but if we look at it this way, I need moles over grams, and this is for my lead nitrate. Okay, and for every one mole of lead nitrate, when you take the time to do its molar mass, works out to 331.22. All right, you'll notice that I've been speeding through a couple of the things in this because it's totally prerequisite skills. You know how to calculate molar mass for compounds. You know how to recognize, predict products, and balance. So I am now speeding along through that one because I want to concentrate on the stoichiometry rather than grade 10. So now I have moles over grams. Good. I just have to cancel out the grams. You can see grams in the bottom. So grams would go here, and I have 11 grams. I can put that over one if you like and you can see grams now go. I have moles of lead nitrate when I do these two steps. Now I'm ready for the stoichiometry. Okay, so this is when I start using the species to figure out my fraction. I have lead nitrate and I want it to go bye-bye. And I'm trying to learn about NaCl. Okay, now I take my mole fraction. You can see that it's two parts NaCl for every one part lead nitrate in the balanced equation, and lead nitrate now goes. You now have moles of NaCl, but that's not what you want. You want mass. So again, this one requires yet another conversion. It's still a moles to mass or molar mass conversion, but moles are in the numerator when you look at the remaining units. And so moles go down here, grams up top, and for every one mole of sodium chloride, it weighs 58.44 grams. Okay, moles now go, and you're left with grams of NaCl. All right, when you get your calculator answer, you get 3.881. And so therefore, in two digits, that would be 3.9 grams. Okay, something else you can see in this solution here is, again, we only have that one part, this fraction right here, which is the stoichiometry. The other parts were to convert to moles and from moles so that I could express an answer in grams. 
this is about as hard as I can make it, not that it's challenging, but it's got the most steps to it because you had to convert grams to moles to do stoic, and then you had to convert moles back to grams after stoic to express the answer in the units that we wanted. So this is the more realistic of the situations in which there's conversions on either end of your mole fraction. Something else you can see as why we have to do moles rather than mass is the mass of one mole of sodium chloride is far less than the mass of one mole of lead nitrate. What this means is mole quantities are not comparable due to mass. This is why we have to do these tedious steps in stoichiometry of converting two moles using the mole fraction and then converting again out of moles. There is no way around this. This is the necessary stuff in stoichiometry when dealing with chemistry. Again, we can't count atoms or molecules. They're far too numerous. And so we have no choice but to convert other measurements. Here we go. Let's take a look at uh, one more. And we have a solution of calcium nitrate. There you go. Reacts with excess sodium phosphate. There you are. Producing calcium phosphate and sodium nitrate. I've already done my solubility chart to find their states. And I can see that calcium phosphate is my precipitate. A couple of good places to start here with balancing. I have three calciums and I have three sodiums. It doesn't really matter where we go. I'll pick calcium arbitrarily. Three calciums here. There's only one here, so I'll have to triple this. That gives me three times two nitrates or six nitrates. So I'll have to put a six over here. That gives me six sodiums. There's only three here. I'll have to double this. And then that gives me two phosphates. Whew, no more numbers. That one's finally balanced. So for this one, we are looking for the mass of precipitate. Which one is the precipitate? It is the solid in solution. So you're looking for the mass of this guy here. And we've been given 5.2 grams of calcium nitrate right here. All right, so now we're just looking at the relationship between calcium nitrate and calcium phosphate. So, good place to start here would again be with the molar mass of calcium nitrate. That put moles in the numerator, which we want. All right, if you didn't catch that and you just start with 5.2 grams, it generally works out for us. So there's 5.2 grams of CaNO3. And now I just need to convert those grams to moles. And so grams would have to go on the bottom, moles up top. And for every one mole of calcium nitrate, as you take a look at that one, weighs 164.10 grams. Grams now cancel out of the problem. You now have moles as your remaining unit for calcium nitrate. That's what you need to do stoic. And so we go to our stoic fraction here now to eliminate calcium nitrate and get to calcium phosphate. All right, look at the mole fraction. You can see it's one part calcium phosphate for every three parts calcium nitrate that are consumed. And so now look at the units that you have left and it's moles of calcium phosphate. You're one step away from the answer here in this one. And so for your calcium, <clears throat> pardon me, phosphate, I just need to use its molar mass. Moles, however, in the numerator, so they go down below now to cancel. Grams up top. And calcium phosphate's got a lot more going on, so it's going to be a lot heavier. And it's 310.18 grams. Moles now cancel out of the top and the bottom of your fraction, and you are left with just grams of calcium phosphate. All right, this equals, when we round the answer, because we're running out of room here, 3.3 grams as the 3.27 rounds up to 3.3 grams. Okay, so there you go. That's the calculation there. This question does go a little bit further from 7.1. It says, what entities are used up and what entities are left over? Um, I'm probably not going to tie questions like that straight up into your... Um, questions on the chapter 7 test here, but if we want to take a look at a total ionic, okay, we could take that and we could come down here, and your total ionic then would be 3 calcium 2 plus ions plus 6 nitrate ions 
plus six sodium ions. This one's going to take some space. Two phosphate ions. And we have the precipitate, so calcium phosphate remains as a solid. It does not dissolve, therefore it does not dissociate. And you have six Na plus and six NO3 minus. When you go through, you can see that nitrate was a spectator. So too was sodium because they stayed in solution before and afterwards. So the net reaction that we saw was really just between three calcium two plus ions, two phosphate ions, to form the precipitate of calcium phosphate. And so we can see that entities used up would only be one. All right, calcium nitrate way back up here was the limiting reagent where sodium phosphate was in excess. So when we take a look at what was the limiting reagent, okay, between calcium and nitrate, nitrate didn't play, only calcium played, so all of the calcium would have to be used. So the only entity used up was the calcium 2 plus ion. What entities are left over? Well, two very obviously, all right, the nitrate and the sodium, because they were spectator ions, were not used in the reaction at all. Therefore, they must be left over after this is done. So my Na plus and my NO3 minus must be, com uh, must be left over in their original quantities. There is one more left over. Let me take a look at uh, this one. Some of the phosphate from my excess sodium phosphate did have to get used to make this precipitate, but this guy was in excess. So I had much more sodium phosphate than I needed. That's what excess means. So while I used some, a reduced amount of my phosphate had to be left over. Okay, hopefully that made sense to all of you guys. Definitely try uh, some of the examples on 286 to 290. This is fundamental and major, and we use a ton of it going forward. Okay. You must know this skill, you must practice this skill if you have any hope in chemistry going forward, and especially Chem 30. Page 290 has a few practice questions. Try a few more there and see how it goes. I have more examples to go with, uh, with you, or through with you, uh, in Lesson 2 of Gravimetric Stoichiometry, but we're also going to introduce um, limiting and excess reagents where you have to determine which is which. So we just add one extra or two extra steps. The stoichiometry is still the stoichiometry. Well, you'll find that it starts to become repetitive here. That's a good thing because it means it's masterable. Okay, give it a shot. Good luck with it. And um, yeah, we'll see you in lesson two as we start dealing with the issues of limiting reagents.